You're listening to the Traffic and Conversion Show. I'm your host, Michelle Fernandez, and today I am sharing the top three effective marketing strategies to acquire new customers. So stay tuned. Welcome back to the show. How is it going? Q2 is here. Did you do a reflection and a debrief of Q1? Like, what did you accomplish? What were your wins? What were missed opportunities? And what didn't you accomplish and why? That is something really big. Instead of beating yourself up about the things that maybe you didn't do, that you really wanted to do, right? Because life gets in the way, things happen. Um, I love doing this exercise because it allows me to reflect on so many things. Like, where was my time not best use? <laughs> or where did I best spend my time? Same thing with my team. Like, is there an opportunity for some training or for them to upgrade? Like, what are what are some things that I'm looking at? So I try to look at things at a different perspective and all kinds of stuff comes up, right? Then going into the next quarter, I am really looking first and foremost, do I still want to do the thing or things that I set out to do at the end of the year, right? Because at the end of the year, we're making all these kind of plans. We're in this kind of like dreamy world. And then as things start to evolve and take place, sometimes you either shift into something new or you really want to go all into the one thing, right? You want to lean into one thing. Um, For me, one thing um, that I'm working towards has shifted, which I'm really excited about. It's not a shiny object. It's something kind of evolved out of what I'm doing already to serve more people. So then what I do is I set my the next quarter, the top three, right? So what um, are the top three like non-negotiable? These are the things that I want to do, achieve, targets I want to hit. Like what are those three things? So um, if you ever are like starting to do something, you're like, wait a minute, does this go back to my top three? <laughs> we have to constantly be reminding ourselves of that. And I do have a whiteboard that I have now have up and I have this down and I'm constantly looking at it because then... It's like when I have a conversation or I don't know about you, but a lot of times it's like so-and-so is doing this or I heard this strategy works in that. It's like I just look right at the board and I'm like, does it go with this? Is it distracting me from what if is it pushing me away or am I leaning into it, right? I even find this with my customers because a lot of my, especially my fractional CMO clients, depending on the vendors that they hire, the contracts they hire to implement, one of the strategies that we have um, decided that we're going to do a lot of times those people come in with ideas. Hey, this is what works for other clients or or have you tried this? This might work, right? And a lot of times we get into the like, oh my God, that's so good. Da, da, da. And then we're like, okay, hold on. Like, and that's usually my role. It's like, hold on. Like, let's really look at this holistically with everything we else we have going on, right? What is the main focus? Is what we're doing right now really working? Because if it is, let's not all of a sudden switch because somebody said something to do right now, let's lean into it a little bit more, see where it goes from there. And then if for whatever reason, we've exhausted all our efforts, now we have these other ideas, right? So a lot of times that this happens, and there's, and honestly, I would rather have somebody come with ideas than not come with any. It's just you as a CEO deciding, is this good for you right now? Okay. And again, all of these marketing strategies work. It's just what is working for you and what's working best of you and why go away from something that's bringing you revenue. Okay. So, and when we talking about revenue, what are your Q2 revenue goals? Like, are you breaking them down per month? Like, how is that going? So if you're looking to, let's say, grow and scale? Like, are you trying to see what your run rate is? Are you trying to see, okay, if I increase by this much, if I implement these strategies, like, like projection, I would like the revenue should be going from here to here, right? Okay, all kinds of things, right? Just as a reminder, write it somewhere. If you don't have a whiteboard, put it on a post-it where you're looking at it daily, maybe even get one of those cute little chalkboards that you can write on and kind of put it on the easel if that works for you or that's kind of what you want to do.
but just be constantly looking at it and get excited about it, right? Even when those tasks come up that you're like, oh, I don't want to do this, right? It's like, yes, but if I do it or I get the team on board to do this, this is what's going to happen, right? Okay, so you know that marketing is all about creating strategies and campaigns that will help you meet these revenue goals. That's the whole reason why I love doing what I'm doing because I know that with marketing and putting the right campaigns and deploying them properly, you are going to be driving awareness, right? You're going to be driving demand for your products or services. The role of the marketing campaigns is to do the heavy lifting for you to get your prospects primed and ready to buy, right? So that way, when they go to the sales page or they go to book a call, they're pretty much ready to go, right? Because the marketing has done all that warming up, all that priming. So they're literally like, okay, I'm in. Like, tell me how much, where, where do I put the credit card, right? That's the goal. So let's dive into the top three effective strategies that will help you prime your people and get them ready to buy so you can acquire more and more new customers, all right? So the first is conversational marketing. This is a powerful tool for engaging with potential customers, customers, and really building lasting relationships. If you've listened to my podcast, um, you know that I'm all about opening the conversation, right? People do business with people, not with companies or brands, right? So starting these conversations is vital to the growth of your business, okay? And then when you use this um, conversational marketing, you can create these conversations that lead to increased sales and customer loyalty. Now, you can do this manually, right? I see people do this like organically all the time where they're reaching out and they're having these conversations. However, what I would like you to consider is automating some of the process, at least the beginning part. So I'm sure you've seen um, people that you follow on social, they're saying like, hey, drop scale in the chat or DM me the word routine, right? And I'll send you something cool. Or then you could sign up for my whatever class that's coming up, right? That is a chat bot. And most people use ManyChat, which is basically in your DMs or your private messenger on Facebook. You can do both. And it's basically opening the conversation. A lot of it is creating um, organic, I'm sorry, um, it starts the conversation. So that way someone is responding immediately, right? And you're able to engage with customers in a more meaningful way, right? So you're able to start the conversations and address their questions or concerns in real time, okay? The key to successful conversational marketing is to make the conversation feel natural and authentic. So by using this persuasive style, you can guide the conversation towards whatever the desired outcome um, that you want them to be, right? So such as like a sale or maybe a sign up or something like that, right? But it's important to balance it with basically how the conversation will flow naturally and build this trust, okay? So let's just look at it like if we're talking about where you're commenting in and the whole idea is to get them into uh, signing up for your webinar, right? So it can literally be, um, hey, I'm so glad that you wanted to sign up. Tell me your name, tell me your email, right? And then it's all integrated on the back end that will get them signed up. So now you've had this conversation that's on automation, and then maybe you leave them with a question and someone on your team responds, or you have the whole thing set up with a bot, right? And a lot of people are anti-bot because they're like, oh, that's not a real person. And listen. If you want to scale at the rate that you want to, or you want to hit these incredible goals that you have set for yourself, you are going to need help, right? And even if you hired a full team of people to be in your DMs all the time, that's not necessarily the most effective way to, number one, use your resource as your team member or use your dollars for to pay your team members to do this stuff, Take some of that load off, get things going. There's also ways that you can set up the bot where you're asking them basically questions about where they're struggling. So on a previous episode, we talked about like the right message at the right time. So how cool would it be if you're like, hey, what are you struggling with? 
Like, let's say you're selling skincare. Are you st struggling with sensitive skin, fine lines and wrinkles, right? Like what is going on that you can then send them basically in a funnel, but in, in the messenger and give them content or give them connections and, and um, answers or resources, tools to help them with exactly what they're struggling with, right? Conversational marketing is not just about the sale. It's about building relationships with your customers and creating a positive experience that will keep them coming back, right? Um, just like when I was talking about when you're talking about feeling natural and everything. And if you think about even to another way, like as a lead magnet, you can send them to. So depending on what they answer and they're struggling with could be a lead magnet, or it could be something that you already have. So whenever I say assets, that means what do you have that you, that you don't have to create? such as podcast episodes or such as blog posts, right? You already have those going. Maybe you post things on YouTube. So imagine if I said, hey, I am struggling with um, building an audience, right? Building uh, my target audience, okay? I might create this bot that then leads them back to uh, a playlist, if you will, of specific podcast episodes that are just about target audiences, okay? So these are all kinds of ways that you can really get creative and use the bot on automation to send them down this funnel. All right, next up is brand ambassadors. Now these are an effective way to promote your services and really build brand awareness. So brand ambassadors are customers that have used your products or services and they've had success with it, right? They've gotten that transformation, gotten that result, and they're like your raving fans. They, they, they just can't stop talking about you because you've literally changed their lives, okay? They're so passionate about your company services and they have a deep understanding of the value that you provide to your clients, okay? Okay. So what does this look like? How can you make this work for you? You're like, okay, brand ambassadors, I think I get it. Um, it's a little bit different. It's similar, but different than an affiliate. So think about this, okay? Um, part of the onboarding process when they come inside your program, depending on what your program is, okay? You would say, okay, let's just say two weeks in, four weeks in, depending on the flow. You send an email with a survey and basically saying, hey, how likely are you to refer this product or service to someone else? If they rate a four or higher, then now you segmented them into this list telling them about your brand ambassador program. So um, where like you, um, let's say, give them a referral fee, right? When they refer a friend. Um, you definitely want to make it worth their while. So really think about that. I've, I've heard of businesses where they give them like 50% of what it is, and that could be worth their while, right? To say like, why would I promote it? Not just from the goodness of my heart, because people will do that for free. Um, however, you want to get them in there because think about it. You're If you're spending pay traffic, or you're doing things organically, you're spending your time, which is probably costing you more than any cost per lead that you're paying for paid traffic, like a Facebook ad, right? So just think about that, that you're able to pay them for something, but now you have acquired this customer. And if you do a great job of retention and things like that, now you can increase that lifetime customer value where you've paid basically this brand ambassador to acquire that sale. Make sense? Okay. You can also consider giving them some sort of swag. Maybe there's like a um, a scale if they refer like one to five and then five to 10 or whatever. And it could be like different prizes, if you will. It could be maybe some swag that has your branding on it, right? Because everybody loves a water bottle or a t-shirt and all that kind of stuff. And then when they wear it, use it whether it be in person on social, now you're doing like a duo thing and you're building the brand awareness, okay? You can also give them exposure by having them come on a webinar or a live video or inside your community and have them share their experience because their story will most likely resonate with current or potential customers. Because by hearing their stories, 
they're able to build this trust and create this sense of authenticity that will resonate with your audience, okay? So really consider how you can use a brand ambassador within your business because it's an awesome way to help you achieve your marketing goals, right? The last one is influencer marketing. Now, this is another powerful tool for promoting your brand and reaching new audiences. Okay, so let's just take the Real Housewives because you know I love me some Real Housewives, right? So if you follow them on Instagram, you'll probably notice that every once and again, they promote, usually I've seen some sort of a beauty product, right? So whether it's like a cream, a makeup, hairstyling tools, right? All the things. Um, I see them all the time and I buy them all the time, <laughs> okay? Now, they have a huge, a large, large following on Instagram and they have built loyal fans, right? Because they're all following them who trust their opinions and recommendations on these products, right? So I don't even know if they're using it or not, even though they're showing them using it. It's just like, oh, well, if she's promoting it, then I it must be good, right? Um, so I could be getting scammed, although everything that I bought has worked beautifully and I'm very happy about it. Now, you may not be a Real Housewife fan <laughs> or even get one to be an influencer. However, it's a possibility, depending on how big you are. But consider other celebrities, right, or other influencers, like maybe a local celebrity, like a news anchor or radio personality, you can also do some homework of influencers that has um, that does regular content similar to your product or service or has an audience that you want to get in front of, right? So even just think about it, if if let's just say there's a mom, a mom uh, person, I was going to say a mom blogger, but a mom that talks about, I don't know, homeschooling, talks about parenting, whatever that is. She's got an audience of moms, right? So if your product or service has to do with moms, then why not approach her to talk about your whatever, right? So also too, like here's another example. Let's just say that you sell pots and pans, right? You can search for a chef um, that is always cooking stuff or right, whether it be healthy or whatever it is, right? And then you contact them, to, hey, if I send you these pots and pans, will you try them out and promote them, right? Because now they have most of the people that are following a chef is most likely wanting to get their recipes and looking, and they're going to also be a good um, client of yours because they're going to use your pots and pans. Is this making sense? Okay, so get creative, do some research, figure out what you want them to do. So you have to be very, very clear. And depending on, well, I would almost say put everything in writing, okay? And then of course, depending on the level of influencer, meaning like the more followers they have, the more famous they are, um, you would expect them to, number one, ask for money, right? So you just have to dial into either how much you're willing to pay and what does the promotion look like? So how many posts, how many stories, right? Um, is it over a certain time period or is it all just in one week, right? So you have to look at your promotion schedule. You also want to look at like, okay, when it comes to paying them, like either are you going to give them a percentage of what they sell, right? Are you just going to pay them for posting? You also want to be looking at like how long can you use the content for? So this is big with a couple of my clients. It was like, hey, we're going to go and do all of these things, but you can only use it for this this week, right? Or these couple of weeks. And you're paying for this asset that you have in your arsenal of promotions that it could be something that you want to promote. Maybe you're going to have a, a sale next season or you want to promote this product like later in the year in Q3. You want to be able to use that asset again. So make sure when you're going through this, do some research and figure out what that's going to look like. Okay, that's very big. So you know and you don't either get intimidated or um, you don't either pay too much or pay too little, right? So just figure it all out. Okay, influencer marketing can be a very valuable asset um, to your marketing strategy because you're leveraging other people's audiences, which is a highly effective way to expand your own reach 
and promote your brand or product. Um, because think about it, they're edifying you or your product. So it's like that automatic trust factor is there. So your audience is most likely to buy. I mean, look at me and the Real Housewives. Like I literally am like, okay, Melissa Gorga, whatever she has, I'm going to buy, right? All right. I appreciate you so much for being here today. Cheers to getting some really good marketing strategies in place to crush quarter two and beyond. Until next time, let's grow your business together. <laughs>